All right, we're gonna talk about some coffee and tea. Now, why this is so important is while we're fasting and trying to eat a ketogenic diet, we wanna have some ability to have some delicious coffee and tea during our fasting windows, and maybe a little bit after. So let's talk about what's going on here. We have some tools that we're gonna to need. Obviously, we're gonna need lots of coffee. I like to order specialty coffee. This is Larry's Beans. It's from Raleigh, North Carolina, and I, I have whole beans here, and I'm gonna grind them up for you here in a minute. And I'm gonna make a French press coffee. This is how I like my hot coffee. Now, the thing about drip coffee is you have to use paper filters. A lot of times those are bleached. They can kind of, they can contaminate the coffee, make it taste kind of funny. A French press is about as straight coffee as you can get. So we're going to use French presses here. Look, when you're making coffee for yourself, especially when you're eating healthy and, and making sure you have all the best foods, just spend the money on the coffee and do a good job making it. Don't buy that nasty drip. Don't use the Keurig. Follow this method. Let's make some great coffee together. We're using Pete's coffee today for the ice portion of the coffee. Along with the ice portion, we're gonna need some bags. We're gonna need to get some of these. These are cheesecloth bags. They're really cheap. You can get them online. They're about $20 for a couple of them. You can reuse them a lot. We're gonna use them for iced coffee. This is how they're doing it in all the coffee chains. They're using these cheesecloth bags. The difference is that you're buying an iced coffee for $5 when this right here costs you $5 and you can make many, many cups out of it. So we're gonna find a way to do that so you can stock yourself full of coffee and you can make sure it's in your fridge and ready to go. That way, if you have hunger cravings and you need a little bit extra coffee, you're ready to go. You're all set up. So let's get into it then. Oh, also, for those who have a sweet tooth, stevia. People love stevia. I personally don't like to, to have sweet stuff in my coffee, but if you do crave a little bit of sweet, a couple drops of this goes a long way. And if you're not fasting, maybe it's your afternoon and you're having some coffee, heavy cream is the way to go. Now, why heavy cream, not half and half and not milk? Heavy cream is high fat low sugar. For half and half and milk, what they do is they actually take out a lot of the cream and leave the sugary lac lactose layer that's left over. And that's really what gives you the, the sweetness from half and half and coffee or half and half and milk. So let's make sure we use heavy cream as our cream substitute and our creamer in coffee. So first and foremost, you know, if we're doing this and we're trying to do this in succession, we want to make sure that we do the hardest thing first or the thing that tastes the longest. So number one, let's get our water boiling. Okay. Got a kettle full. I love a kettle. If you're a microwave person, great. If you don't have either one of those, a pot on the top of the stove, that'll get you some hot water. Let's set it up really quick. We just have that cooking in the background for us. Just like that. Let's get our French press set up here. My standard coffee grinder. Not a whole lot to that. I like to use about a cup of beans to make this much French press right here. Not to mention, these beans are so delicious. You can smell how good they are. They smell a lot different than your standard coffee you get off the shelf. So, you know, treat yourself. Find that local roastery that you really like or order your beans online because, you know, when you're trying to eat like this, you want to make sure you treat yourself in the right ways. And this is one of those ways. Oh, already. I can smell the coffee. It smells so good. Oh, yes. I like a fine grind in my coffee. I like to be gritty. You, know, you can choose your preferred grind. Oh, yeah. Almost there. Oh, boy. Mmm, looks so good, too. Can you see that? All right. All right, we're halfway there. French press is almost ready. Now when it comes off the stove, when the water gets ready, we'll pour it in there and we'll let it sit for a couple minutes, let it steep. That's French press. So when I get up in the morning, this is what I do. I come downstairs and I grind them and I make my hot water and I get the coffee going like that. At the same time, while everything's cooking, let's get our iced coffee going. Maybe that's your afternoon thing. Maybe you live in a place where it's warmer it's in the summertime and you want iced coffee instead. Let's talk about that. Now, like I said earlier, we're gonna use our cheesecloth in here. I like to put about five, about five or six cups of coffee in here. Let me pull out a bigger measuring cup here so we have it. This is a cup. One cup. You know, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pour it in. I like, you know, it depends on how strong you like your coffee. With iced coffee, the thing about it is if you make it super strong off the bat, you can always dilute it later, but you can't make it stronger. So go ahead and do yourself a favor. Make, use about five or six cups 
in your iced coffee. And then of course, it, you know, if you pull out the fridge and you and you put it in some uh, in in your cup and it's just too strong, put a little water in there. Generally, iced coffee it'll dilute with a little bit of water. So about you know one or two minutes after you put it together, it's a little bit weaker than when you started. All right, four. Mmm, five. This coffee smells so good too. Let's do six. Let's make it strong. I like a strong coffee. Oh yeah. Look at that. You know, well how satisfying is this? And of course you just tie your cheesecloth up real easy. Slip it through. So this is what they're doing at all those coffee spots that you're, you're paying $20 a cup for. They're just doing this exact thing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in our container, just like this. We're gonna have some coffee. This is filtered water. Please filter your water. There's so much stuff going on in water that the first thing you need to do is just make sure that you run it through a Brita or a water filtration system. Yeah. Look at that already. That already looking so good. A little bit shy on water. I'm gonna grab some water from here. This is my mega Brita. I drink a lot of water. So I'll make sure that it's good. Just gonna top this off. Oh my goodness, look at that. Already this is looking like delicious coffee. Now, we wanna make sure that this bag is, is down in the water. So you give it a little push, okay? It'll start to submerge. Stick the top on there, that'll push it down even more, and you can secure the top. There we go. That's how you make iced coffee. Now, you can't generally make this in the morning and use it throughout the day. So what I like to do is, maybe it's Monday, I can't dine and make my hot coffee. This would be my coffee for Tuesday and Wednesday. I'll let this sit for 24, 48 hours. Really, I'll just let it sit until I'm ready to drink it. It won't mold, it won't go bad, it doesn't need to be refrigerated. All you need to do is just set it on your counter in a cool place and just let it be. And it just turns into delicious iced coffee. Add a little bit of ice and you're there. When I'm done with mine, I, of course, like to divide it up. That way I can start over again. I can start this picture all over again. So, you know, I put it in a vessel like this. Now, look at this coffee. Look how delicious it looks. Dark and delicious. Let's see what it looks Let's put it a little bit together. Let's see what we got. This is tea for just a minute. We'll put a little ice in this glass here. So I made this probably three days ago. It is just the darkest, most delicious coffee. Look at that. Now this is how you'd be treating your coffee. Don't drink the drip, don't drink the curries. When you're having coffee, it should be dynamite coffee. Because you know, this is, we're gonna be drinking this a lot. This is gonna help quell some of that hunger that you're feeling. That caffeine intake is gonna be so delicious. So make it yours. Let's go a little bit further, huh? Let's say that we're, we're done fasting. It's the afternoon, this is our afternoon coffee per chance. Or maybe you're doing intermittent or alternating day fast and this is your morning. But you know, this, this cream goes a long way, just a little bit. Heavy cream is so delicious and has so much good stuff for you. Don't, don't skimp and go with half and half or milk. That won't do any good. Check this out, look how delicious this is. All right, that's about as much cream as you need. Mm, look at the color of this coffee. Look at the caramel color. This bag, this guy got out. We'll put him back in. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> okay. Look at that. Put the top on here because I will elbow this over and then it'll be the end. Oh, goodness. For those of you who like a little sweet, this is what the stevia journey looks like. Stevia is very, very strong. So you want to make sure you use the dropper. You only need a couple drops. We'll go one, two, maybe three. Maybe you got a sweet two. That's as much as you need. Trust me. Here we are. Look at this beautiful coffee that we did. This is all made in our kitchen. You didn't have to go anywhere for it. If you want this throughout the day, you can make these. Oh my goodness. Almost tastes like ice cream. Mmm. It's delicious. You see what I'm saying? Easy. Easily done. So this is our guy, right? All comes from our ice coffee making capabilities. And you can make a ton of this at one time. Okay, so I definitely recommend doing so. This will help you set up right for your coffee intake as it goes along. Now, 
if you're not a coffee person and you're a tea, I don't know if you know how to make guys coffee, we're gonna talk about it really quick. You need a pitcher. I would recommend an, a glass pitcher. You don't wanna do heated plastics if you can avoid it at all. Just kinda of bypass that. What you wanna do is just kinda of sink these in. You wanna find yourself a, a, a spoon or a fork or something and just kinda of tie those around like that and let them kinda of sit just like that. Just like that right there. Now, obviously you need to boil water, but our water's a little bit busy, so let's just pretend like this water's boiled. This is all you would generally do. You just want to sink, you want to just want to cover it. Make sure your tea bags are in there floating. Five minutes. Obviously don't put your fingers in the hot water, but five minutes, and this should be steep plenty, okay? And this will, this will allow you to have a lot of iced tea. Again, if you're just going out for your iced tea, that stuff can stack up, especially if you're drinking them throughout the day to kind of give you a little something to taste while you're fasting, okay? Five minutes later, really easy. You pull it out, no muss, no fuss. The thing about it is don't go squeezing these tea bags because unlike coffee, which we are going to squeeze the bag for, this will actually make the tea release a lot of bitter elements. So whatever actually happened during the steep phase while hanging out in here for five minutes, that's plenty of tea. Don't worry about it. Just pull it out and throw these in the trash without squeezing them, okay? And that's some tea setup for you. Maybe you're not an iced tea person, which is just fine. I don't think I have to tell you about hot tea if you're a tea person. But if you are into it, you know, Taza makes some really great teas. And uh, all you really need to do is find yourself some hot water. Chamomile citrus. This is a non-caffeinated one. I do like to use these. Oh my goodness. It smells so good. It makes you kind of want it right there. We'll just wait for our hot water, maybe we'll have a little tea. So you can see the setup's real easy to have this stuff. You need your cheesecloth, you need a couple of vessels to put stuff in. You need a nice French press. If you're gonna grind your beans, get yourself a solid uh, bean grinder, excuse me. And this is how we're gonna go about it. Making lots of delicious coffee you can take with you on the go, anywhere you go. Have some hot in the morning, have some cold in the evening time. Really make it pop for yourself. Let's wait on that hot water and I'll get right back. Guys, hear that? The kettle's about to go. There's nothing more satisfying than getting up in the morning, grinding your own beans, smelling that coffee smell first thing, and then hearing this. So you know it's time. All right. Oh, perfect. Now, before you fill it up all the way, generally, Put the top on there, all right? Get it down in there, and then lift up this lid and then pour over top of it. That'll make sure you get plenty of water in there without having to do overspill. Look at this, guys. Look what we got going on here. Can't tell me you don't want some coffee right now, huh? I forgot my tea. A little bit of tea here. Oh man, that smells fantastic. Oh boy. Here we go, huh? So look. While you're doing this stuff, while you're, while, you're, while you're doing this program, set yourself up for success. Make your coffee so delicious. Make your first cup amazing. Make sure you have delicious iced coffee to back yourself up in the afternoons. Maybe right before your workout, have a little bit of iced coffee. Maybe you're drinking during your workout. But set yourself up for this kind of stuff. Oh my goodness, I think it's time for me to have some coffee. You guys stay tuned. <laughs> 